Yeah, I, I do this feel that there is a bit of a lack of creativity at Rangers at the moment. Uh, I think obviously the introduction of Hadji um, addresses that uh, a fair bit. Um, I was quite impressed with him. I mean, you know, he's by no means the finished article, but, you know, I think there's certainly enough there to work with. Um, and it's kind of similar with Kent as well in that there is a good player in there, but I'm not entirely sure, as Stefan was saying, that the tactical system really gets the most out of him. I mean, we covered this on our 25 under 25 uh, series, but essentially I think that Kent's been asked to play as a sort of number 10, whereas his best position is probably as an out and out winger. Uh, and actually, I do think as well that Hadji seems to me to be a, num- a natural number 10, uh, as opposed to that, you know, playing as sort of a two. You know, like they, they both, uh, as a pair of number tens. Um, so I think that the thing that's impressed me with Hadji is uh, is his ability to drop between the lines, get in good positions, create space for himself, and then take the ball on the turn and then start driving at goal. And you know, whether that's picking out a pass or whatever, I think that's really encouraging. And that suggests to me that in order to get the most out of him, you probably do want to play him as a central number 10. As I said, I think Kent is best as a natural out-and-out winger, which means that you probably need to bring in a right winger in the summer at some point. Uh, obviously, they had Shea Ojo on loan last uh, season. Didn't really work out. I mean, he showed sort of little fits and bursts, but I think that's probably an area they'll need to strengthen because when you look at how many assists Rangers midfielders have recorded this season, it's pretty poor, to be honest. I mean, when you look at... Um, OK, yeah, Tatavini and Barisic, they've both got six, but they're fullbacks. And as we said, you know, the system's designed so that they do get assists. But <clears throat> in terms of midfielders, you've got Ryan Jack, who's got three. You've got Joe Rebo, who's got six. And apart from that, no Rangers player has more than two league assists this season, which is really poor. I mean, you can, as we're saying, when you compare it to Celtic, Forrest has 13, Christie's got 10, and Edwards got eight. You know, so these are players who are obviously they're good, obviously good at scoring goals at Celtic, but they're also good at laying them on and providing them as well. And Rangers don't really do that at the moment, and that's a big issue. So I do think that they could use a right winger, um, and I just think that until they get someone who is really creative like that, who can you know consistently be getting assists, consistently be you know causing havoc in the final third they are going to struggle because they can become a bit one-dimensional. So I think it will be interesting to see uh, who Rangers do go for in that position. I'd be very surprised if they didn't get sign anyone. Uh, and there is actually one guy I've got in mind who I'm sure listeners of the podcast will be very sick of hearing me bang this drum, but Stephen Lawless is out of contract. He's in his peak years of his career, and only Christy... Forrest and Edward got a greater combined goals and assists next season. I think someone like Stevie Lawless is exactly what Rangers are missing. And I'm sure there's probably some Rangers fans rolling their eyes saying, like, oh, come on, he's a guy who's just left Livingston in a free contract. How good can he be? But I think, I honestly believe that he is the sort of guy who could really, you know, I think he could give so much to, to Rangers. And I think that with his style of play as well, you know, he's very versatile. He can slot in, he can slot in at different positions and different formations. Um, he's very, very good at cutting inside uh, from the right wing. And I think that's important because that then still gives Tavini a license to roam forward. On the, other, on the other wing, if you've got Kent playing as a natural winger, he also likes to cut in. That then gives, that still allows you Barisic that freedom to go forward. And I think that that's maybe where... We will, we will see a bit of change next season at Rangers. I think that we probably will see a, a switch from a 4-3-2-1 to a 4-2-3-1, and it might not sound like all that much, but it then basically gives you an extra attacking player who's then occupying space, which then gives the defen- uh, opposition defenders another guy to worry about. And, you know, it just sort of stretches that part in the final third because that's where Rangers came unstuck so often last season. It was when they were playing against a compact, you know, like a bank of four and a bank of five or vice versa. And you know, there wasn't really that space in between the lines. If all of a sudden you've got another guy in there occupying space, that frees up more space out wide. And then that can hopefully get the best out of someone like a Kent or whoever it is that uh, Gerard decides to bring on the, in on the right. So I, I would imagine that's what we'll, we will see next season. Um but certainly they need to do something else and I think that definitely in terms of a creative midfielder who is consistent, that would be 
key because right now you've got the guys who are getting the odd assist here and there and apart from that it's all going through Aribo, Barisic and Tavernier which just isn't enough you know they're all good players but you can't be relying on three players especially when two of them are fullbacks to provide the entire creative output for your team